It's Maxim Vashir Lagrau versus Magnus Carlsen at the Global Chess League. Maxim with the white pieces playing for the upgrade Mumba Masters opens with 1 e4. Magnus goes all solid with e5. We have the Rui Lopez on the board and Magnus goes knight f6. The Berlin. Magnus playing for the SG Alpine Warriors here. And Maxim says I'm ready for the endgame Magnus. The famous Berlin endgame that was popularized by Vladimir Kramnik against the great Gary Kasparov. Magnus is going for that endgame. Maxim is world's foremost expert in this endgame playing with the white pieces. And so Magnus is not going to have an easy time. It's considered to be a very solid opening this one. But if there's someone who can actually make a dent in it, it is Maxim. He brings his knight back. The idea is to bear down on the d4 square with both your pieces. Magnus thinks for a bit and plays a sideline. Now there are only four games which have continued this way. And he almost moved his king there. Yeah, he touched the king. He has to move it because c4 would drop a piece. So he goes king e8. Magnus moves his king to e8. And Maxim plays his knight here. Now, the thing is, after trades, we have reached a position where black has the bishop pair, while white has a better pawn structure. Who is better here? That is the massive question. And both sides have to make use of their edge. For the time being, Maxim goes bishop f4 with the idea of pushing e6 and perhaps picking up this pawn creating weaknesses and Magnus says I'm not giving you this pawn at all so there's no e6 that you can play. Maxim now doubles on the d file because that is where a lot of things can happen. Magnus pushes the knight away, the knight moves back and Magnus somehow looking away he's thinking where to move his bishop he brings it back to e6. Now when Maxim will double his rooks which he will now yes he does then Magnus can finish his development here with bishop to e7. And that also he does. If he could castle here, black's position would have been great. But the thing is, the king has already moved. So you can't castle. And so Magnus is actually going to activate his rook this way. Very interesting chess. The bishop comes back. And now white is slightly better here. But black is under control you know black's position is not at all bad magnus brings his rook to g8 once the rook is activated this way then the king is well placed no problems here knight jumps in very interestingly wants to win this bishop also eyeing the weak square so magnus chops it off rook takes and he pushes the pawn this might not be a great idea rook g6 would have been better because anyway you can't win this pawn you attack the rook like this so c4 may be slightly weakening there and he plays g4, Magnus brings his rook up, the king comes up, Maxim now uh, definitely slightly better because if you see the double bishop advantage of black is gone and at the same time white keeps his better pawn structure. One more pair of rooks have been traded. How does Maxim create inroads? He goes h4, wow. He's sacrificing his pawn so that his kingside pawns can start rolling forward. Takes, he moves his king up. Now he would love to play his pawn up with f4, f5. And Magnus comes in with his rook. Maxim brings his bishop forward. I think Magnus is defending this very well. Yes, bishop g5, stopping pawn up to f4. And now comes bishop c3 by, by Maxim. Magnus now beginning to press it seems because what is white's active idea here? White again stops the pawn from moving forward. It seems like Magnus's position getting better. And now they are trading the bishops there. Take, take, rook takes. And it seems like this rook endgame will be drawn because... Uh, both sides have equal number of pawns. Yes, black is a pawn up right now. Oh, he sacks a pawn. But Maxim is like, oh, I have an intermediate check. King moves. And what is he going to play? Is he going to take the pawn? No, he pushes forward. Now a very big threat is rook here, take here and then attack this. 
So he should play C5. No, he goes. That's a bad move. Now Magnus must save the spawn. That's the final defensive move. No, he blunders again. Bad play by Magnus in this endgame. And now the problem is that Magnus is in big trouble. He's losing his C7 pawn. First, he picks up the H4 pawn. Maxim knows that he's not going to win. He's going to win the C7 pawn. Magnus comes up, chops off another pawn. You can see Magnus is under big pressure. He moves his rook. There's no way he's going to be able to save this. Another check. Now the a6 pawn is falling. Magnus wants to make a move but he's unable to find it. This position is gone. He brings his king up. And Maxim can actually take this pawn but he can also activate his king up the board. What is he going to do? He is actually going to beat the world's strongest player here, King G5. King comes up and now MVL can chop off the pawn there. Yes, he does. He does. And now takes here. Rook attacks the pawn. The king can't come and save it because the rooks get traded. And that's a winning pawn in game. And he's going to lose this pawn. With that, white will have two extra pawns. Look at Magnus there. He's so unhappy. Why did I play this way? And resigns the game. Handshake there. Maxim Moshe Lagrav finds the win and he had actually placed the kings wrong on the board magnus apologizing to his opponent there saying i didn't want to place it there but mvl with the big win there for the upgrade mumba masters